Hello everybody, my name is Mel and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to have the most cozy, impromptu, 24 hour middle grade read-a-son and I am so ready for it. I have a huge stack of middle grade in front of me to talk about, so grab your favorite book, grab your favorite drink and let's get started. Today is actually the type of day that I don't have too often. So I have no work to do. I really have no housework to do. I'm probably going to cook a little bit, but aside from that, I have no other responsibilities. I am just ready to dive in and read. I want to do face masks. I want to have a bubble bath. I want to read middle grade. Whenever I think self care, I automatically jump to middle grade because it's just so fun and relaxing to read. And because this is middle grade March, I thought I'd turn it into a bit of an impromptu 24 hour read-a-son. So I actually went to the last library yesterday, I grabbed a bunch of middle grade, plus I had a few already on my TBR that I'm excited to dive into. So let's talk about some of the options for this readathon. Let me just start by saying I have a ton of books and of course there's no way I'm going to get to all of these. In fact, I'll probably just get to one or two, but I think the best thing about doing a 24 hour readathon is coming up with a stack that you can just flip through and breathe through and find which one you're gravitating towards most. So that's what I've done here. These are all middle grades that I'm super excited to read. I don't know how many I'll read today, but let's find out together. So the first one on my TBR is Wonder. Now this is one I've had on my TBR for probably three plus years and I've been kind of hesitant to read about it. I think whenever I'm reading about a school, uh, especially when I'm seeing someone go from homeschool to regular school and I anticipate there's going to be some sort of bullying or some sort of conflict, I tend to steer away from those stories because I am a teacher and I do teach that age group, so sometimes those stories really do hurt my heart. But I've heard from so many people that this is a wonderful, wonderful middle grade. I know it's definitely one of the middle grade classics that everybody should read, so I do want to jump into it. I also know this is a series, this is the only one I own, but if if I do like this, then maybe there'll be a trip to the bookstore or two after it. I'm excited to jump into this one, finally. Another book I've had on my TBR for quite some time is this one, The Slightly Alarming Tale of the Whispering Wars. This is the follow-up to The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Middlestone. This one's a tongue twister for sure, <laughs> but that book is so wonderful and adventurous. And this is the next book in the series. It's also by Jacqueline Moriarty, of course, and it follows a character that we meet in Bronte called Finley. And all I know about Finley is that he's going to an orphanage school in Spindrift. Uh, let's see. So it looks like there's going to be maybe some conflict that he is going to be a big part of. It mentions witches and sirens. I am super looking forward to jumping back into Jacqueline Moriarty's writing more than anything. Her characters are outstanding. I really do think she has one of the biggest imaginations in all of middle grade. Uh, Bronte Metalstone was one of my favorite middle grades I've ever read. It's one I recommend at every chance I get. And this is a chunky middle grade too, which always feels fun to read. I much prefer reading paperback, so I think that's kind of why I've steered away from this one for a little while, but I think this might be a fun one to just get lost in for 24 hours, so we'll see if this one makes a cut. The next book is one I picked up at my library, and truth be told, I'm probably not going to gravitate towards this one. So this is Frostheart, or Voyage of the Frostheart, and it's by Jamie Littler. I've heard phenomenal things about this. My understanding, and I'm kind of going into this one a little bit blind, but my understanding is it's basically ice pirates, which sounds amazing, but it also sounds perfect for winter here, and it's definitely starting to turn to spring. We're in a really foggy, gloomy kind of weather day here today, but it has been warmer. I've been going outside without a jacket, I don't know that I want to jump right back into the snow and ice. So the reason I picked this up is because I had requested it from my library. It needed to come from a different branch and it took so long to get here that the weather actually turned. Uh, so I don't know that I'll be picking this one up, but if it does start to get a little bit chillier outside, then I might, we'll see. This next book is another library find, and it's one that I've never heard of, and I am super excited. This one actually might be at the top of the list. It's called The Time of the Fireflies, and it's by Kimberly Griffiths Little. Uh, let me read the inside to you because this absolutely sucked me in. So number one, it has the most beautiful cover, but the inside says, when La Larissa Renaud starts receiving eerie phone calls on a disconnected old phone, that gives me uh, You've Reached Sam vibes for sure. In her family's antique shop, so cozy, she just knows she's in for a strange summer. A series of clues leads her to the muddy riverbanks where clouds of fireflies dance among the cypress knees and cattails each evening at twilight. 
If you know my book taste, you know one of my absolute, absolute favorite middle grades is King and the Dragonflies, and this is giving similar lyrical vibes so far, at least in the synopsis. It goes on to say the fireflies are beautiful and mysterious, and they take Larissa on a magical journey through time where she learns the secrets of her family's tragic past. Deadly, curse-ridden secrets that could endanger the future of her family as she knows it. And when her mother suddenly disappears, it becomes clear that it's up to Larissa to prevent history from repeating itself and a fatal tragedy, tragedy from striking the people she loves most. Doesn't that suck you in? Don't you want to read this? I think this is going to be the perfect middle grade for springtime or for summer, depending on when you're picking it up. It also is reviewed by Kirkus on the back, so it says readers should respond to this perplexing puzzle, which sounds amazing. It has a starred review from School Library Journal, which I always think is a good sign. I'm excited to read this one. I think it's going to be phenomenal. If you've read it already, let me know down below. I haven't heard much about it on the booktube community, so I'm curious about this one. And uh, I'll tell you my thoughts as we go along because I think this is definitely going to make it into this readathon. This next book is actually one that I half read last summer and then had to give back to the library. So whenever I am borrowing a middle grade book, I'm always really careful to check and make sure that there's not a wait list for it. As soon as I see somebody waiting pop up for a book, I try and return it as quick as I can because my expectation is that that's probably a middle grader who would probably benefit more from the book than I do. So this is one that I got about halfway through and had to return. It's called A Snicker of Magic and it's by Natalie Lloyd. From what I remember from this book, and honestly, I'll probably start from scratch if I do pick this one up again. This is about a girl who collects words. So she sees words in a way differently to how I think most people do. It says some words glow, some words dance. Basically, she's able to envision words. Really interesting concept. But the one word she's always looking for is home. And that's because her family kind of traveled around in basically a food truck. Uh, and she never has a steady or a stable home in the traditional sense. She never has a community or a place to go back to. So this is all about her looking for that. And when she finds what could be home, there's a bit of magic uh, dispersed in that town. So I think this, from what I read, it was phenomenal. I was flying through this one. This is one that I definitely do want to pick back up. Uh, it's one that I think is really, really fun. There are some really, really cool little um, neat names for things in this. So if I remember correctly, let me get this right. Uh, the van that they travel in is called the Pickled Jalapeno and the place where she's going is called Midnight Gulch. That gives you an idea of just kind of how fun this book is. And I'm excited to dive back into this one as well. As you can tell, that is a ginormous, ginormous stack of books. And like I said, I'm not hoping to get to all of them, but I am hoping to pick away at this list and find which one I think uh, draws me in the most. What I might do is I might do try a chapter of a couple of them and then see from there which one I want to continue with. I've tried doing try a chapter in the past and what always always happens is the first book I pick up I read the chapter and then I just keep going so we'll see if the same thing happens again uh, but that is my plan. Oh I have one more update for you about today's reading as well. I do still have about 25 pages of Tower of Dawn left. So that will be actually my first order of business is reading that and clearing it out. That book has been fun so far. It's definitely different from the rest of the series because of course we're following uh, only a few characters, but we're hearing little glimpses of the other characters as well. So if you don't know, T Tower of Dawn takes place kind of at the same time as another book in the series, but it's following different characters. And a lot of people choose to read them uh, in patches. So they'll do one chapter of one, one chapter of another. For me, that was just, it seemed a bit too tedious. So I read them kind of in chronological order, how they come out. And that's been great. I've enjoyed it, but I am super excited to get back into the main story. Uh, and that comes in the form of the last book, Kingdom of Ash. So I'm not going to touch Kingdom of Ash today. I definitely need a bit of a break. The one thing I will say about the Throne of Glass series is everybody in that series has a really similar sounding name. And although it's YA fantasy, and although the romance is really what people I think are drawn to, I find the fantasy world a little bit confusing. And I'm someone that loves epic fantasy. I'm someone that loves adult fantasy. I find it hard to keep those characters straight. So I definitely feel like I need to give myself a little bit of a break from that. And middle grade sounds like the perfect thing. Let's get to reading. I'll update you along the way and I'll see you in a bit. Give me love. Give me all your love, oh, cause I want you. 
No one else makes me feel this way Don't know what you do Hold my hand, could you hold my hand? Look me in the eyes You and me, yeah that's all I need And I'll be So I actually just finished Tower of Dawn and I wanted to pop in really quick because I did not have high expectations for this book going into it. I've heard so many people say they wanted to skip it in the series and just jump right into Kingdom of Ash. Do I think that maybe parts of the story could have been interwoven into the other books? That might have been a better way to do it because as you can tell this is a chunky book and it doesn't really progress the whole series forward as much as the other books do of course but I will say I absolutely adored the relationship in this one. Uh, a bit of a spoiler, I won't spoil it too much but I will say that it wasn't necessarily what I expected going into this book but I absolutely adored it. I also love the setting. I thought the setting was beautiful and lush and this was one that was just kind of a fun read so I am super glad that I read it. I'm super glad that it exists. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that it was its own thing. I also think that this could be an interesting kind of spin-off because the setting is so different and the characters are a little bit different than the rest of the Throne of Glass world. So I actually think that this would be neat to see kind of as a full series. And I know Sarah J Mass is kind of starting to interweave some of the characters from some books into others. And I wonder will we ever see anybody from uh, this particular place again? I'm curious but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually try two different chapters one from the time of fireflies and then the other is the book with a super huge long name <laughs> by Jacqueline Moriarty from now on I'm just gonna call this whispering wars because I think that's a lot easier Oops. Uh, so the slightly alarming tale of the whispering wars I'll read a chapter of both and then I'll update you to tell you which one I'm picking and which one uh, I think I'm gonna go with for the day I'm leaning towards this one already just because it is significantly shorter and I might be able to actually do two um, I just got a call from my partner we're getting Starbucks so I'm super excited for that <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic fantastic day so let me keep you posted on how this goes the chapter in the time of the fireflies and the whispering wars and I think surprisingly I'm actually vibing more with the whispering wars so far in the time of the fireflies it's a really interesting concept she's in her family's antique shop there's this whole wall of phones and she gets a phone call and she thinks to herself I didn't really think any of these were hooked up so I'm not sure how this is happening but she answers it it's very clearly a voice but then when she hangs up she says wait a second I was right there's no cord so it is really mysterious and it's really interesting but I also am not totally vibing with the writing I'll give you an example of why not for instance this sentence reads nope I didn't see no white figures floating up my English isn't perfect and in a middle grade especially I know oftentimes authors will write how middle graders speak and I think that's what the author is doing here for me that's just not something that I have a great time reading because I find I'm always correcting the grammar when I do. So I'm not such a big fan of this one so far but I will say I've loved what I've read from The Whispering Wars. It starts off really interestingly. Uh, basically what we find out is that some children have been taken from an orphanage 
uh, on the eve of our main character's 11th birthday, which is giving kind of Nevermore vibes, which I think is really interesting. But I love Jacqueline Moriarty's writing so much, and I just fall right into it each and every time. The first chapter is really interesting. I've never seen this done before. There's lots of little uh, definitions mixed in. So they're talking about a competition, for instance, and she'll say, the definition of a competition is this. And then at the end of the first chapter, a bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't talk towards the plot at all. It says, all right, I'm done defining things. You can grab a dictionary if you need it from now on. So it's just those little bits of humor that I think are so interesting and so great for kids especially. Uh, but this is definitely the one I'm going to be sticking with. So for the rest of this vlog, hopefully I'll be reading The Slightly Alarming Tale of the Whispering Wars by Jacqueline Moriarty. I should be able to finish this today. It is a middle grade. It's big. It is over 400 pages, but I usually do fly through middle grade, so I don't think I'll have any trouble finishing this. I'm going to hunker down and read for a few hours now, and then I'll update you with my progress then. I also think uh, later today I'm probably going to do a bit of an at-home spa day, which I'm super looking forward to, and I'll take you along for that as well. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes Tired snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets and Yesterday has gone to sleep that's left is you and me I can promise you're the only thing I see Hold my hand and hear the words I say Close your eyes and let us fade away Build a secret place for you and me Let our minds be caught up in a dream I am doing a face mask now. I just had the most delicious cup of corn chowder, which I made today. It is very gloomy and rainy. I think I put a little clip in here of what the weather looks like. And it is just so dark, which means everywhere I go to film in my apartment looks extremely, extremely dark and extremely uh, grainy and noisy as well. So my apologies for that, but hopefully you can see me okay now, although I'm sure you probably would rather not to uh, with the face mask, but I have my kind of my big teaching light set up. So hopefully this is a better place. Uh, I just wanted to give you a bit of an update. So I am about 200 pages into Whispering Wars right now and I am loving it. I think it is phenomenal. One thing that I didn't recognize that it did is that it actually jumps back and forth between narrators, but they do it in a really clever way. It's like they're all teaming up to tell the story, so they're passing the baton. So one of them will say, okay, now it's time to hear what sinks. And then you get to hear their uh, rendition as well. 
and I think it's really interesting. They kind of talk about each other, they leave little notes for one another. It's just, it's been so much fun and I really, really enjoy it so far. So my plan for the rest of the evening is to let this sit for another 10 uh, minutes or so. This is one of those warming masks so you can feel it kind of warm up. It's from Pharmacy. I hope I was able to get a clip of it. I think it's a honey potion mask and it warms up kind of as it sits. So I like to leave it on for a little while uh, and then once I take it all off, I'm gonna hop in a bubble bath. And then after that, my plan is just to have a really relaxing evening, keep on doing what I'm doing, which is reading. And I'll probably end up closing out the, the vlog tonight actually, so that this can get posted uh, as soon as possible. So I've kind of been working way at it as I go. I've been editing bits and pieces, which has by far been my favorite part about starting booktube. I love the editing process. I just think it's so much fun. So I'm gonna keep working away at this for now then I'll hop in the tub then I will do some more reading and of course I'll keep you updated along the way So I am not quite done this book, but I'm definitely done with this vlog. So today is actually the day after Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour started, and I'm not cool enough to have gotten tickets. I'm definitely not in Arizona, but that didn't stop me from staying up way later than I normally would to consume all of the tour content. So all of the YouTubes, all of the Instagram, all of the TikToks, I was watching them all until about 3 a.m. So it's now about 9 p.m. and I'm ready for bed. <laughs> so even though this is a 24 hour readathon, the 24 hour mark is going to pass while I am still sound asleep. So I figured I'd end the vlog now with my thoughts on the Whispering Wars. One thing that I always, always look for in middle grade is content that would not only be fun for middle graders, of course, but also for adults. So I know I definitely mentioned this when I was talking about the A Pinch of Magic series on my channel before, but Jacqueline Moriarty does a great job of it too. So this is actually at the very beginning a poster uh, and without giving too much context away because it would be spoilers, if you put together the bold uh, letters, it will actually spell J-A-C-K-A-S-S-E-S. -S -S -E if you are a good speller, you know what that is. And I think that's a perfect example of just how fun Jacqueline Moriarty's writing can be. It's definitely fun, I would say for kids, absolutely. But I think for adults, finding those little Easter eggs in here has been so much fun too. There's also a lot of really uh, good discussion on I would say the difference between the two schools. So this goes back and forth between two narrators. They're helping each other out and also criticizing each other at times, uh, but the book is told from their two perspectives. And one is from an orphanage and the other is from a very well-to-do fancy uh, kind of a preparatory or private school. So hearing their difference of opinions and seeing the assumptions being made that the private school is always going to be the best was really, really interesting. Now, one thing that I wasn't expecting in this book was there to be any mention of colds or flus or superbugs. One thing that I purposefully avoided for this video, or one book I purposely avoided, I should say, was Hollow Pox, the next book in the Morgan Crow series. And that's because I personally don't feel like I'm ready to read about a pandemic again just quite yet. I still need a little bit of separation before I'm there. So I haven't touched Hollow Pox yet, but I feel like there were really similar or similar themes in this book that I didn't know were going to be there. So there's definitely a super flu uh, and that is a part of this. So just be aware of that going into it. But other than that, so far it has been absolutely phenomenal. I have no doubt it's going to be a five-star read when I'm done and I've just loved every second. What I've really, really loved is taking today to just read whatever I want 
as much as I want. It's been so lovely. So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini vlog. I know I've enjoyed sharing with you and I hope you'll subscribe and like if you haven't already. Uh, and I'll see you next time, everybody. Bye.